Hello there everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make these wire work wedding necklaces and these are the two that I've made here. So first of all, I made one in silver that looks like this. But then I also made one in copper just to show the difference between the two colored wires here but on the same piece and also the difference between them as well is for the silver one I used 4mm bicones. You can see they have a big impact there. And as for the copper one, I use 3mm bicones just to show you again the difference where the 3mm one here on the copper is a little bit more delicate, so that's what they look like. So we basically make the basic shape first of all in this graduation of the teardrop shapes, and then we add our beads, and then we just attach whatever kind of chain that we want to, and obviously our findings as well. So these are the necklaces for my wedding set that I've made, Why Work Wedding Set, and I'm gonna have a playlist in the description box down below to all the other pieces of that set as well, so you can check that out. But if you wanna learn how to make the necklaces for that set, then keep watching this tutorial. So these are the materials that we're gonna need. First of all here, I have two different gauges, a regular round silver coated copper wire. The first one is a one millimeter. So this is gonna be the base wire and the strength of the piece. And here I have a 025 mil wire. This is gonna be the weaving wire and the wire we're gonna to use to attach our bicones with. And then the bicones that I'm using are these four millimeters of rusted crystal AB ones. Now I'm just using these, but you can play around with the size of beads that you want to add. It really depends on the look that you want. I then also have one head pin here that we're gonna to use to add in the drop in the middle. And then we need some findings. Now, first of all here, I have my chain. So this is the chain we're gonna to use to attach our pendant piece to. So you can obviously choose whichever kind of chain you prefer or even make your own. And then I just got some jump rings here as well to help connect pieces together. And the findings that I'm using to finish it off with is first of all my lobster coil clasp and then my extender chain. Obviously you can use whatever kind of clasp that you prefer. Now I'm gonna put the material list and links to the materials in the description box down below there so you can feel free to check that out if you might find that helpful. Otherwise, let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. So then we need some lengths of our wire and what I have here first of all is a length of my one mil of about 20 centimeters. And make sure it's nice and straight so we don't have any kinks in it. And then we also need a length here of the 0.25 mil of about one and a half meters. So then we need to take the length of our base wire and start making the shape. But what I just want to give a tip with first of all, to make it a little bit easier is what you can always do is sketch out the shape that you want first of all here. So you sketch that and then as you're making the shape with the wire, you can always refer back to this. So basically use it as a template that can make it a bit easier, but it's up to you whether you want to do that or just do it freehand. And then to help make the shape, I'm gonna be using my six step bell making pliers here. And the reason that I'm using these is because I can choose the steps that I want and I'll know I'll get exactly the size and shape that I want for the loops that I'm making. So obviously you can choose all the way from the small to the larger ones. You can also use any other form of mandrel that you might have handy. So I then take my pliers here and then also my length of my base wire. And we need to start from the middle. So make the largest loop in the middle. And because of that, I also need to start in the middle of the wire here. So I'll place my pliers in that midpoint and then have about even lengths on both sides coming out from the pliers. Something like that. And then I'm using the largest step there on the pliers. And then I just want to bring the two ends around and basically overlap each other to come towards the opposite sides. So we get a bit of a loop or teardrop shape here like this. And we can always just kind of use the pliers or whatever mandrel that you're using as a guide so it doesn't have to be exactly like this but it just gives a nice shape in place we can always open it up if we want it a bit larger or close it up if we want it a bit smaller so you can obviously adjust it completely along the way so for instance i want mine to be a little bit more elongated in the teardrop shape so that means i want to open it back up but i have the shape in place so you just kind of open them back up slightly but keeping that shape so it really depends how you want yours to look as well. So you can see that gets a bit more elongated like that by just opening it up. So just until you're happy with this largest loop in the middle, and then we need to move on to either side and make the next one up. So before we can make the next loops there, we just need to get these lengths of our wire in the right place because I wanted to kind of curve outwards a bit in a nice angle. So that just means I'm basically adding a bit of a curve just a bit after where they're crossing over each other just to get them in a nice position to make the next loop on either side or teardrop shape and just as even as possible obviously so to make it as symmetrical as possible on both sides 
do something a bit like this here. And then we need to bring the tail to a little bit further down to more or less create the first hair for the first side of the next teardrop shape before we then use the pliers again to add in the curve on the bottom. Something a bit like that. So then when we have the Y in position, there's also coming downwards a little bit again to basically start the next loop on either side. I'm gonna place them back in my pliers and this time I wanna step down in size. So I'm taking the next one down. So this is the second largest size on my bail making pliers. And just place the pliers in the wire where you kind of want that next loop to be. Now it's not definitive, we can still adjust it once we make the loop here. So again, place my pliers in and then I just bring the tail, to do one side at a time, all the way around, again overlapping, going over the top of the rest, and then basically back towards the top there, so again we get that teardrop shape. We can just do that for now. Then on the other side we do the same, so just judge where you need to put it to get about the same size teardrop shape as the other side there. But like I said, it's not definitive, we can just get it in there initially and then always adjust it to get it symmetrical. So again, bring the tail around, go over the top and then, so we get that teardrop shape and then we can just take it out and you can see this one here, if you just look at it from the right way, my left one is a little bit larger or longer than the other one. So what we can do is instead of kind of undoing it, all we need to do is basically roll it inwards to make it a bit smaller and just kind of work like this to make them match each other. So if you need to roll it in or if you need to open one out, you just roll the other way by opening it up there then. But otherwise just keep adjusting these two until you then have them as symmetrical as possible. And they kind of sit nicely, also symmetrical compared to that middle one. You can see this one is also a little bit further away. So I just need to bring that a bit closer to that middle one. By just kind of closing it up. And just keep adjusting this until you feel it's nice and symmetrical. When we're then happy with how the three loops look so far, then we just need to bring the ends of the wire there in position again. So I'm kind of holding on to this loop that I'm working by, just one side at a time. Then I want to bring it further around and down just to start getting a nice curve in place but also just so it sits in the right place the next loop that we want to make or teardrop shape kind of bring it outward towards the side here same principle as when we made this previous ones something a bit like that and the same on the other side as well hold on to that previous teardrop shape just to make sure that doesn't go out of shape while we're moving the wire here and try and get it as even as possible again. So we then have the wires in place. I need to use the pliers again now to make the next teardrop shapes. And they're also the final ones. And something roughly a bit like this. And again, we can always just keep adjusting here until we are happy with how it looks. And then again, make the next teardrop shapes using the pliers as well. So then for the last couple of loops here, again, I'm stepping down one step on my bail making pliers here. So this is the third largest now. So graduating down the size as well, which helps with the shape and effect that we're gonna get. So first of all, I'm starting on one side, placing my pliers roughly where I want that next teardrop shape to be, then bringing the wire around. And again, we can adjust it if we need to. And again, just bring it over the top. This doesn't really matter because we're also gonna then actually finish off the wire after this. We'll just bring it over the top for easiness to create that teardrop shape. And see, we're kind of getting the shape in place. And then if you need to tighten it up a little bit, just roll it inwards. So we get that nice shape there. And obviously, same thing on the other side. Try and get it as symmetrical as possible. So this one as even with the one we just made on the other side. But again, it's easiest to kind of judge that by making it first here, roughly where we think it might need to be. Then have a look at it and see, basically compare them. I can tell this one is a bit too large. So I need to roll it inwards to tighten it up a bit and make it a little bit smaller. And then just keep comparing those two 
to basically get it again as symmetrical as possible. So we end up with the final shape. And then what we need to do once we have that is get rid of the excess of the little tails here. So once we're happy with our shape here, to get rid of the excess little tails and finish off the base wire, what I'm going to then do is take my flush cutters, just on one side at a time, we want to cut off the excess but keeping that final loop or teardrop shape in place. So basically where we want to cut it is right on the inside of where they overlap each other, those two lengths of wire, well the same wire but where it overlaps with itself. So just cut it towards the inside of it, something like that so that when we've cut it, the very end now, actually when we flatten this down, either just using your fingers or a pair of flat nose pliers, the end is butting up against itself, basically the side of itself, right at the point of that teardrop shape. And obviously do that on the same on the other side as well. So once we cut off both ends of the wire, we have the final shape in place here with all the little teardrop shapes. Now what I just want to mention as well is make sure that when we cut these ends off and we're left with that final teardrop shape, you might just want to open it up a little bit because what we need to make sure is that the length of the 0.25 that we cut ready can get just through there so it's not flush against the side of itself but we can just gently get the wire through here because we need to weave around here later on. So now we have the shape in place we need to bring out our weaving wire that we cut ready and what we need to do first of all is find the middle of this so I put both ends of it together and then up here where it's folded, that's where the middle is, so I keep hold of that midpoint there. Then I want to bring in my shape here, and first of all we need to attach this. So we're going to start right from the middle on that bottom loop, and just make sure you hold that middle of the weaving wire in the middle of that bottom loop, and then I need to attach it by wrapping it around, just like this here, bring it through that teardrop shape, and then basically we need to keep weaving like this, so I'll keep coiling the weaving wire around the base wire, so because I'm working with this side, I'm just going to continue with this for now. Working from the midpoint here. Make sure your wraps are nice and close and tight next to each other. So just like this here, make sure you keep pushing them together, either with your nails or you can use a chain nose plier or something. So keep wrapping like this. And basically what we need to do is get to the point where we need to add in the first bead, which is going to be between this large loop and the next one up. Obviously that's on this side. On the other side here, when you get to that point, you can just stop wrapping. And then we pick back up the other side and we continue wrapping on this side. Now in this case here, it's going in the opposite direction. So here we need to bring it through from the bottom. And then again, push them close to continue wrapping to the same point on this side here. So now we've all the way along the bottom of this teardrop shape there in the middle. Then it's time to add in the beads. So again, just start on one side, do one side at a time. So on this right side here, I'm just going to add my bicone onto the end of my wire and then let it drop all the way down. And it's going to slot right in there between these two teardrop shapes just perfectly. You can see there. And then what we need to do is bring the wire onto the next teardrop shape. So the middle one on this side, next step down there and continue weaving around the bottom part of that one and just make sure you check what direction that you're weaving in before so you continue in the same direction on this side here so I'm going to go down through that next teardrop shape and then push that all the way down so that bicone sits nicely in place and it doesn't move around, it's not too loose or anything and just keep weaving across the bottom of this teardrop shape here until on this side we reach to the point on the other side of this teardrop shape where we're going to add in the next bead. So keep doing that. Same thing on the other side here. Add the bead to the end of the wire. And let it drop all the way down so it sits in that little space. And here, if you remember, we were wrapping around the base wire in the opposite direction. So in this case, we need to make sure we come up from below through this one. And otherwise, just do the same thing. Continue across the bottom of this teardrop shape so it slots in place there. And then until we reach this point here between the next two teardrop shapes or loops where we need to add in the next bead. And you just add in them in the exact same way. And then we just need to continue wrapping across until we get to the middle there after we've added in all the beads. 
So now I added in all the beads there and I've kept wrapping my weaving wires across the top of that last loop and then towards back towards the middle there to the large loop at the top. And then where I just want to show you that I've ended up is at the very first crossover point of the base wire. So we want to continue weaving because we want the two weaving wires to end up in the middle there. So you just want to do that by moving from this base wire that we weaved around to the next one. So basically you want to continue wrapping but we then just, in this case here, go down through the next loop like that and then instead of just going around that same one we now bring it behind the next one so it's going to be weaved in that space here between this middle loop on this side and the large one in the very middle of the piece and we then go to weave around there so basically just swap from the one base wire to the other one and then we keep weaving here until this one ends up right there in the middle where we have another crossover point and it's pretty seamless so we kind of just swap the wraps and the coils from this one to the next one and you do the same on the other side so you just bring it across the back and then you come up in that next space here where you can then continue wrapping around that base wire between the two teardrop shapes until this one also reaches the middle and they both end up right there at the top of that middle teardrop. So now I've got both of my weaving wires into the middle there, then I want to finish them off, get rid of the excess. So I'll just do one at a time and then I'm going to get my flush cutters out here. And then this one is wrapping around in this direction, going towards the front like that. So I want to cut off the excess but just leaving a short little tail after where I cut it. Something like that, because then I want to take my chain nose pliers and we have a little end there. We can kind of see it. We need to make sure we push that in and tuck it out of the way. So basically, I'm going to push it in and more or less continue the wrap. But obviously, it's just a little short end of the wire. And then I'm tucking it in so it ends up in between basically the two base wires that are overlapping, just like that. Make sure you kind of Flatten it down and then I like to roll my pliers in the direction that the wrap is going to really get it in there. And obviously the same with the other one. Cut off the excess. It's going in the opposite direction. Like that. And then just push that in between the base wires using the chain nose. Kind of rolling it through. until we then can't feel or see anything because then they won't catch on any skin and they'll be comfortable to wear. So this is now the basic shape in place. So what we need to do now is attach the little drop on the bottom there and to do that we need to get a head pin out and then the final little bicone bead here and then just put the bead onto the head pin, push it all the way down. Then I want to basically make a wrap loop here and in the process of making that we need to attach it to the shape that we've just finished so make sure the bead is pushed all the way down there and then I take my chain nose a little bit above the bead so there's a bit of space between my pliers and the bead and then I push it back so I put a bend in there then I take my six step bell making pliers again you can use round nose pliers and then I want to bring the tail of the head pin all the way around overlapping so we get a full circle like that Just make sure it comes all the way around there like that and then before we make the wrap part of this loop here we need to attach it while it's still open so I want to put that end open end there through the large teardrop shape right there in the middle just need to open it up a little bit so bring it all the way through so the bottom of that teardrop shape goes into the actual loop then I'm just going to flip it around here and take my chain nose pliers again and grab onto the very bottom of the circle that we just made, like that. And then use this tail to wrap right underneath the circle and basically fill in that space that we left between the bend and the bead. And this is then also going to 
secure the bead one place so it's not going to kind of be loose. Just keep wrapping until you don't have any more space. Something a bit like that. And then we just need to cut off the excess. So I just take some flush cutters. And then cut off the excess as close as you can get there. Like that. And then always make sure that you squeeze down that little end so that's not sticking out anywhere. So there we go. So now we've attached this little drop and that just dangles nicely right below and continues that shape that we have with the rest of the little titter shapes but also those beads that we've added in. So all that's have to do now is attach whatever chain that we want to use and you just use jump rings at the end of the chain and then attach and the top loops there on either side and obviously also attach whatever findings so clasp and that that you want to use as well and then you'll have your finished piece. So I now finished my necklace here by attaching the chain and my findings and then I've also made one in copper so you can see the difference there and how it looks with a different coloured wire and also as for the copper one I've attached 3mm bicones instead of 4mm ones and this one so they're slightly smaller again just to show you how they can look even more delicate on the neckline so this is the final result so we have all these little teardrop shapes but graduating in shape and then creating this lovely neckline piece and also that drop on the bottom there just adds a little bit of movement and it hangs lovely on the neckline so this is what they look like. So these are the necklaces in my bridal suite that I've made. So the Wirework Wedding Suite. So please feel free to check out the rest of them. I have a playlist with all the pieces that I'm going to be adding to this set here. So you can check that out. I'm going to put a link to that in the description box below. So feel free to check that out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this one. And I'll see you in the next one.